Hey everybody, welcome to another stream by Oakmont Esports. I'm Mr. Worden, and today, uh, Oakmont, I'm sorry, those are the Berserkers. Oakmont Berserkers are playing Husky Regional um, from Fairmont Preparatory Academy. This is week two in Play Versus uh, Main Season Fall League of Legends, a California varsity match. Uh, we are getting partway through picks and bans here. Oh, looks like we had a player drop and are back in lobby. Um, so while we're waiting to get going here, let's just do a quick player spotlight. Shout out this week to Andrew K. Um, he is one of our streamers and broadcast engineers. He is our top laner. Uh, he's been playing League of Legends about a year and a half now, I think. Um, he's a junior with the great grades. Plans to go to a four-year university and study computer science. Um, besides conventional sports, what he likes about esports is the community and professionalism. Um, he does not like people to skip anime openings. It's kind of funny. And his favorite gaming moment was when San Francisco Shock um, won in 2020. I'm um, jumping over to our full roster here. You can check out our Mobilitics pregame. Um, we have silver, silver, unranked gold, silver. Although I think that our support player has ranked as high as platinum in the past. Um, currently, we're basically kind of a mid silver to gold team. Uh, we know that we are going up against two platinum players and a gold, I believe. So it could be a pretty tough matchup. We're definitely going to be fighting uphill this game. And I think that one of the plats is going up against our silver top laner. That was, again, uh, Andrew, um, our player of the week. So uh, let's start to jump in here. Let me close those out. And let's load up our Mobilytics pregame. Or actually, we'll just load up the League of Legends draft. There we go. Actually, now that I think about it, my Mobilytics pregame might not be working yet. Let me work on that. Um. Yeah, so you guys can start to see some picks and bans coming through. Looks like we are prioritizing um, Zach's comfort pick, which is Draven ADC. He loves playing very aggressive and in their face. Um, expecting to see kind of a, ooh, yeah, expecting to see kind of a support pick come through next, probably make that priority happen. Uh, looks like they're going with the Vlad top lane. That has the potential to snowball out of control. Um, definitely going to be watching that, and it's going to be Andrew's job to try to try to mitigate Vlad's snowball potential. Um, seeing a Yubi come out, I don't know if you guys watched um, the world's uh, groups, I think it was Cloud9, um, got a kill on a Yumi in bot lane, that was pretty funny to watch, never the thing you want to see happen. Alright, let's see, fixing mobilitics, there we go, alright, so yeah, we are left side there, um, you can see some of our player tags and stats. Uh, People are doing better on vision control. It's definitely something we want to focus on, one of the most team-oriented aspects of League of Legends. Something people in solo queue don't always prioritize to the same extent, but there is good research that in team play, vision is a higher priority than in solo queue play. Um, now, one thing we're doing is we switched up this week from last week. Um, we switched the position of our jungle and our mid. So you guys are going to be seeing Jesus on TF in mid lane, um, and you're going to be seeing, um, who is that, Ashton. Uh, jungle uh, and he's gonna be playing a Talon jungle so pretty aggressive uh, of course Talon just got uh, a buff in the most recent patch I think we're on 1120 right and so that buff should help him out with both clear speed and damage and help him roam around uh, Talon does fall off though so that is still kind of an aggressive early game pick where he wants to hit level 3 and then start ganking from those really odd directions there uh, TF going into Zed is gonna be a volatile matchup but it looks like um, TF is favored, so that's an interesting pick. So far, I would say draft is coming out pretty even. Obviously, uh, Yumi is not a jungle, so I... Oh yeah, it's listed as support, that's cool. And we should see things swap out to, to LCS order, hopefully, in just a couple minutes. Uh, I know that was a little tricky earlier on. Um, looks like both teams are pretty heavily AP at this point. Uh, even though we've picked our ADC out, they have not picked their ADC out yet. Um, Zed's AD though, right? Was builds lethality. So yeah, it's interesting to see the amount of damage on the AP side of things. I wonder if we're gonna see some no magic mantles or anything like that. All right, I'm just gonna check on a couple things here. We got an Overwatch match starting up in not too long. Uh, I'm gonna check that I am in fact streaming since last week we had kind of an epic disaster. Yeah, there we go, that's cool. All right, and check some audio here. 
All right, and check some audio here. Coming through loud and clear. Looks like we got about a five second delay to stream. Of course, our three minute delay is gonna be built right into the League of Legends client, so not an issue there. All right, second set of bands coming through. And it looks like Mobilytics is slightly delayed on this. Huh, okay, we will switch it out real quick to the actual draft. So let's see, final bands uh, targeting Aatrox top. And I'm not sure that they are in LCS order, but we'll find out. Uh, looks like they've got a Jarvan on jungle. Yeah, I, I bet they're Vlad's top. Zed's mid, Jarvan's jungle. Looks like we're putting a Nasus top. So we're just going for that hyperscaling. That should help counteract um, Talon falling off and Draven falling off potentially, unless of course he snowballs like crazy. Ooh, and we've only got one second left on the pick. Okay, so that is an interesting team composition. Um, now I'm wondering if Vlad is their ADC or what's going on here. This is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, it's a Vlad Yumi in bot lane going up against our much more conventional Draven and Swain combo. Uh, mid lane is just like we called it, jungle's just like we called it. And we got a strong duelist in the form of Camille who's going to be trying to shut down the Nasus before he can scale. I'm assuming that Camille's going to be doing the usual thing and trying to get ahead and put a bunch of side lane pressure on us. Whereas our team... Our team's got some good skirmish potential. Um, I don't see our team as doing quite the same amount of damage in a, in a 5v5. I feel like they've got the burstier, bigger 5v5. Um, yeah, not sure about that. All right, let's jump back to Mobilytics here. Okay, so yeah, this all sorted itself out really nicely. And we can see win rates going across this. Definitely not seeing our counter picks coming through. They've got best counter picks for each champion, which is a nice feature to check out. And you can see we basically haven't done any kind of hard counters to this, but that's okay. Um, and I think I can toggle these. Let's see, mid lane, that is a top lane, that's mid. Why is that? Huh. Huh, it's trying to set up Vlad in jungle. Okay, so there's some bugs there, but it's working out for the most part. I think it's all set up okay. Um, yay! I'm very happy to see everybody on my team tagged as early warder, early eyes, good vision control. Um, only two of us are not in the habit of buying control wards, so that's not bad, something we got to work on. Um, let's see, current ranks are coming through. Yep, you can see we're basically a silvers plus one gold team. Although in the past, I think a couple of our players have ranked a little bit higher. And you can see that we are pretty evenly spread out across early, mid, and late game power spikes. Uh, other team is going to suffer a little early on and then scale up a little later. Uh, both teams are kind of dominant on AP, so I'm hoping to see some defensive items target that AP dominant build. Uh, especially, I think that the biggest threat on their team is going to be coming through in the form of that Vlad. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, that, that Vlad-Yumi combo I think is the one most worried about. Although I could be wrong. I, again, I'm hearing that their top laner is one of the more skilled opponents in just the scouting we did earlier. So, yeah, just waiting it out here. Um, I'm going to try to click a button on the Twitch stream and see if it does something. Give me just a sec. How do I get to my Twitch control panel? Ready? We're going to click button here. Okay, let's see if this works. This should take us right through the rest of our spectator delay.
All right, everybody, we are back, and let's jump over. And, oops, let me kill out our cams just a sec. And our icons, we're going pretty simple today. Uh-oh, where are all my cams? There we go. All right, everything's loaded up, looking good. And let me click on all the things. Okay, so yeah, they're Vlad and they're Camille, our high threat, right? Wow, we have two mastery level sevens too. I feel good about this, that's really cool. Looks like uh, all but one of their players are pretty experienced. It may be that their mid laner is kind of lowest on experience. For us, it's our top laner. Um, I'm sure they'll both put in awesome performances though. And we just love to see new people playing, so that's really cool. Not like new, new, you know, like medium experience new. I'm like a level 31. I haven't played that much either. It's been about three years. One game apiece here. All right, so strategically, how are we gonna shut down or at least minimize the damage the Camille's doing? Other thing I'm trying to remember is how do I set up the objective timers? Hmm, not sure. All right, well, we'll get going here. So, Oakmont is starting on the blue side. We're cheering for blue, let's go. Oop, and I'll let directed cam kick in. I tend to miss a lot of the action anyway. All right, looks like my team is mostly five pointing, like a kind of sort of five point, like maybe not entirely five point, but pretty close. Looks like they're kind of stacking in the same. They can't quite pull that off because of Yumi, obviously, but that's cool. Zed just throwing out a, a Q there, making sure we respect our distance, the spacing. Uh, recall coming off, Talon places Ward top and heads bot. So it should be starting red side. Now Talon can start leashless, I think, right? Can Talon start Raptor, or is he just going to get a leash off red? I think probably that, right? I don't see any invades happening. Hopefully our Nasus gets the lane there and knows that the Camille's in a bush. Gotta respect that. Hey, by the way, if you're interested in the Oakmont uh, Overwatch game, we got that starting up at 4.30. It's going to be on Oakmont Esports 2. So shout out to our sister channel and our streamers Ashley. She might be joined by some of her co-casters too. And hopefully that stream gets off to a good start around 4.30. If we finish before they do, we're gonna go try to hit the raid button and see if that does something. All right, CSing in mid, business as usual. Alan's off to a good start. The Jarvan is also starting um, bot side, so both junglers are probably pathing top. Our Nasus is not totally respecting the Camille but that's not too much damage. Small chunk though, it does add up, so definitely a little greedy stepping forward. Draven should be able to put down some good early damage there. Bot lane. All right, got a chunk of health trading back and forth there. Yeah, Draven's able to zone him. All right, I like this early start here. That is a happy, happy bot lane at the moment. Swain's just sitting in a bush, kind of zoning him off. We're slow pushing that as slow as we can go. Of course, uh, this is not a slow push. That is a, what is that, a wave two crash? No, I'm sorry, that's a third wave crash. On classic fast push, that's either gonna let Camille roam and get vision or else get a quick recall in or else just kind of harass under tower there. Um, Swain is going for vision. I think we should know the jungler's path in top side though. And uh, it looks like the Jarvan has a slight edge in clear speed. He's one camp ahead of our Talon. Um, that's okay. Not, not the thing that Talon does amazing. All right, and we got a crash on this tower. Are we gonna harass and stay put or are we just gonna get a clean recall off? Looks like they're opting to stay and duke it out a little more, put a little more gold in the pocket. And I think that's wise. I think the second wave here is not quite bouncing back hard enough. So the fact that they're still trying to push that in. Now we got a potential problem mid lane. Um, let me see if I can get my camera over there fast enough. There we go. Okay, did it for me, awesome. Yep, this is gonna, this is that. Yep, first blood, nice gank to mid lane there. Uh, Talon, of course, is still clearing. He is gonna be able to get Scuttle out of that. Um, top side Scuttle. 
but uh, obviously not the thing we want happening in mid lane there, and that gives their Zed a lot of breathing room. Uh, this Jarvan could continue pathing bot, so I like that our, our players are letting the wave get a little more neutral there. Um, Talon getting forced off the scuttle, Nasus coming, Camille coming in, and that is a lot of damage coming in off the Camille. And the fact that they've got a Zed roaming up too, means that Nasus is now in big trouble, even with the level advantage. He's gonna have to kind of kite and trade back, and he's had to burn flash to get out of there. This also means that our mid laner in TF is gonna have to get out of there as well. So overall, a lot of pressure collapsing on Oakmont topside. Um, good macro level play by our opponents to force our jungler off scuttle, and Jarvan's gonna be able to secure both scuttles. Um, putting their jungler a good, uh, what is it, 6 7 CS ahead of ours. Um, meanwhile, though, um, the fact that we roamed off lost us a little CS in both top and mid lane there. Only lane where we're ahead currently is bot lane, so hopefully that bot lane we can start to play strong side there. Uh, should help with some bot side objectives, obviously. I think Scuttle is going to be a. Not Scuttle, I'm sorry, Rift Herald is going to be a real struggle this game. Let's see if we basically ever take that. And this is a best of two as well, so we can start to adapt our playstyle if we're thinking about that. Other team currently has a, what is it, 0.8k gold lead, not much, about 5 minutes into the match here. To a quick roam by Zed, just probably placing some vision, yep, trying to just keep appraised of Talon's pathing. Of course Talon is able to bounce over walls and stuff, so if our Talon player is doing it right, we should be able to go around some of those obvious ward placements. Warding changes when you're up against Talon. Garvin taking a recall there, just kind of protecting the Camille. If our Nasus overstays though... Okay, good. Recall happened. The Nasus is... Still gonna get pummeled though, having to walk a really quite a long way to get back to safety there. That is definitely something we're worried about. TF isn't gonna lose this trade to the Zed. Um, definitely going down, second kill for the Zed. Talon coming in. Could be able to get a counter kill here. Definitely think it's happening. Uh, ooh, that's a level 6 Zed though. Talon should get this, Talon should get this. Uh, and backing off is totally fine too. Because um, that is a two level edge, even with that health difference there. All right, good, Nasus playing nice and defensive. Problem is Camille knows that, and she's just sitting here freezing. You can see how slow she's killing the minions. It's forcing Nasus to come up to have to do anything, at which point she just gets another chunk out of his health. She's able to do a full commit now. Is just shy of level six, and luckily isn't able to close that kill out. Um, but yeah, that, that freeze is really kind of forcing Nasus into a tough spot there. He's either going to get denied a ton of CS, or else um, basically have to keep overextending and potentially risking the death there. Alright, we got some damage coming through. Yumi is able to put pretty good sustain down and keep healing though. I'm not seeing a whole lot of kill potential in bot lane. And luckily Nasus is back up to full health here. Did he recall? He's now two levels and quite a bit of CS behind though. All right, one level behind, closing that level gap. Still, that's a lot. And he is gonna get harassed under tower here. So hopefully he's able to force, oh uh, yeah, Camille back, there we go, good. All right, I see pings from mid lane. Um, they're just kind of threatening, like where's the TF going? Good job, Jesus, messing with vision, just kind of like making him wonder. A lot of questioning pings coming out. Nasus walking right up to that bush. I think that was a mistake. This is now going to probably be enough to get the kill. Yeah. All right. And I do like the psychology of the Camille right now. Um, their top laner is definitely playing that mind game with our top laner. Hopefully they're aware of that. A lot of damage coming through on Zed. Talon is there to cover. Ooh. And popping the ulti is enough damage to punch it through. Is this a two for one? I hope not. It might be... Yeah! Baited into a pad tower dive. Let's go. I'll take it. Oakmont's on the board with one kill now. Game's not going too great. We are still pretty far ahead in bot lane. Everywhere else, we're kind of struggling. Jungle's not too far behind. It's still close. Yeah, two level disparity in top lane is brutal. Especially against the duelist like Camille. She excels in the 1v1. Alright, now I know that uh, our... TF has unlocked ulti. I am wondering at some point if we're going to see some cool TP flanks coming out. Um, it's got both... Well, teleport's down. Just to get back to lane quickly. But uh, still could use that ulti at some point here. That'd be really awesome.
All right, nice hook by the Swain. Is it enough damage to pull through? It is not, but nice chunk. We'll be back to kind of dominance and bot lane there. And no, no neutral objectives yet. I'm wondering if we convert this into a dragon at this point. Like, yeah, Zed's crushing plates in mid lane, but we have enough firepower here. We could potentially all kind of 4v3 that dragon pit and try to either force a fight or take that objective early. Um, do we want to give up a ton of prior for that? Ooh, 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 ooh. A lot of damage coming through. Talon's there to help cover. And Zed is out of there. All right, so good job um, with our jungle covering our mid there, because otherwise that was going to be dangerous. All right, at some point, when does the NASA start to scale this up? Good, they're doing the Drake. I thought they would. Well done. That's the only lane we got Pryo in, so I'm very happy about that. Um, we see our, our Draven there even threatening their Jarvan. Uh, I don't think we're going to go deep enough in to steal blue or anything like that. In fact, this is a good time for a quick recall by bot lane. Uh, mid and jungle should just go cover mid. And I don't even think that did a whole lot of damage. But uh, Zed's able to get out of there nice and clean and just keep keep our jungle hovering mid there. So, you know, we give up information on where a jungler is, but we're able to just keep that tower alive a little longer. And I'd like to see more poke out of our, our mid laner. Zed's got range, but not that much. Um, this would be a cool time to interrupt that recall, too. That was a greedy recall. And waste the other person's time. There we go, a little too late, but I like the idea. Just denying three or four seconds of recall time, however much it is. That's a great way to disrupt some tempo. Little things add up. All right, Camille's coming in to invade. She will clear, oh good, he got Gromp, okay. And nobody mid lane to gank. Everybody's set up to do so. Not a bad a time to get out of there. Good, pink comes out, top lane missing. All right, they are overextended. Let's see if this can happen. Oh, Zed's coming down though, Zed's coming down. Oh man, Yumi's gonna immobilize. Gets one, is not going to get the second one. And uh, TF comes down too, but he is going to be too little too late. Let's see if Camille's going in for that kill there. I think Camille may have overextended here. Yeah, let's go. Shut down gold, 250. And is this yet again another overextension? Stopwatch is used. Well worth it. Gold card comes through, lands a stun. And of course, our... Mid laner is going to be playing real safe here, but collecting this wave. Yumi's happily riding along with Zed here. So what's what, what was that overall? Was that a two for two? I believe it was. Both our bot and support going down. Um, their top lane and their ADC going down. Actually, I think that was a good fight. I'll take it. All right, Swain's back in lane. And he's got enough tank to sit there and let the Zed shoot at him. That's fine. Draven's back, that wave will get cleared. They should push on, they gotta watch out though. Um, that Zed does a lot of damage, right? All right, cool. And he is still in the bush, still in the bush, ah! Just kind of threatening there. Nice wave clear. Meanwhile, we got the Vladimir rotating mid. Top lane is as before. I actually might give our TF some breathing room. Um, I know Jesus has been getting kind of wiped out all game here. So he's probably enjoying the ability to play a little more even with the Vlad. I think that's a champion he's pretty familiar with too. Not that everybody hasn't played against Zed, but... Ooh! And there's the mobility of Camille coming through again. Chunked for probably two-fifths of his health in one shot. And that's... That's a tanky top lane. Is he building defensive too? Oh, he's got the Doran shield. He's not super defensive yet. Alright, a lot of damage coming back through. Um, Zed's gonna make a clean getaway though, I think. Oh! He uses Shadow to evade there. That was clean. Nice. That was quite a psych to be running one way, bait everybody, and then pop back the other direction. Um, I think he's going to make it out of there. Vlad's rotating down too. Let me see if I can get the mouse in action. There we go. Okay. Auto cam's got it. Ah, okay. Finally, finally. There we go. And now the Yumi should be a sitting duck. Oh no, Yumi pops on Vlad. You know what? We're starting to even this up, though. That was a good series of skirmishes, despite, you know, top lane just being a don't-die situation. 
And Andrew's gonna need to recall there and get back out of there. We got a potential dive coming top, it looks like, too. Let's see, there we go. All right, we got a dive. Dive's coming in. Oh, yeah, he's toast. There's nothing you can do on the- Well, that's kind of cool. Okay, Jarvan took a chunk of damage there. That wasn't free. That's about the best you can do. Shout out to Andrew. Um, yeah, and this is gonna let him play a little closer to home, I guess, because that charge is going through. Yep, they should take that turret. They're definitely gonna get off one more charge here. I hope that meanwhile we're pressuring elsewhere in the map. It looks like we are basically resetting, so I don't think we're gonna be able to take that immediate pressure there on the other side of the map where more of our players are set up. Um, Camille's probably heading back to recall, right? No? Okay, keep playing. All right. Um, you can see that we got an excellent vision line on bot side. Uh, our opponents definitely have a lot more vision top side, and that's definitely playing to strengths. Um, and we're going to take Drake and then collapse. That actually makes a lot of sense. I like it. Then we can start to pressure for third drinks. Our, our team would love to play Scrappy in the mid game. Uh, Pokemon Berserkers tend to thrive on that. All right, and so here we go. Swain's Belt comes through. A lot of damage coming out of the Zed. Zed should go down, though. Uni's going to immobilize, though. And that might be enough to let them escape. So, well placed Uni ult. Ooh, Blast Cone's a little bit off. I don't think Talon should pursue too far here. Uh, otherwise, we're rocking into a, a fully online Vlad. Oh, I take it back. Not, e not even Mythic yet. Has anybody gotten a Mythic? Yeah, there's, there's a couple Mythics built here and there. Uh-oh. Somebody disconnected. Uh, is that their jungler? Yeah, that's their jungler that's disconnected. That is a bummer. Hopefully they're able to log back in here pretty quickly. There we go, reconnected. Cool. That's no fun. Um, speaking of which, they were able to assassinate our TF. Bunch of damage comes out. Um, able to go for the counter kill though. Well played Talon. And we have a big wave crashing here in mid. Are we going to answer? Or are we going to try to push the Camille? Okay, no, we're just roaming. Alright. Doing the jungle. That's too bad. I kind of think we had an opportunity to take that and then get going. All right, Oakmont takes their first turret. Bot lane is winning as expected. And let's see if we now start to do some lane swap and approach kind of more mid-game tactics. All right, TP comes in to keep the turret alive. Hopefully TF is not getting flanked by Camille or anything. Ooh, we got a bad duel going on. That Camille at this point, let's see, what is she? He's 4-1-0. Uh, Triforce is good to go. TMS is online, so I think we kind of just play around her. And our TF here is going to get dove. Let's see how they deal with that. Uh, not well. Okay, not a whole lot we can do, but that's rough. Um, and yeah, our Draven can walk up, I think, mostly. Well, pretty low. All right, we're going to play defensive. That's fine. Totally agree. All right, gives our top laner a chance to push out and overextend. Luckily, they don't do that. They're going to come consolidate mid here. Try to relieve some pressure. And let's see what's happening bot lane here. Ooh. Talon gets vaporized. And that was a 3v1 kind of sudden ambush there. All right, so at this point, you can see we're about 5k gold behind. Playing pretty defensive. Um, kind of are losing some of that vision control advantage. We still have pretty good vision through the river, but they're now deep enough in our jungle with our towers down. We're going to have to readjust our vision lines here. Luckily, we can see that. Yeah, yeah, good. That was an amazing ward right there. Thumbs up. Place wards, they save lives. Ooh, that's a whole lot of juicy low life minions. All right, we can take this in a 1v2. Darvin's coming around, it is a 2v2, I take it back. We got the tower though. Um, to what extent can the Camille just vaporize somebody? Darvin goes in, that misses. Now we got, uh oh, we got a 4v2 down here, 4v3 down here, it's potentially Pretty dangerous. 4v4 coming up. Okay, we are grouping for almost the full team fight. Except for that little split top lane. 
and uh, looks like our opponents are backing off, back into a 1-3-1. Okay, so they're they are doing what you're supposed to do, which is that 1-3-1 kind of rotate, put pressure on one place, move pressure around. It looks like the Berserkers are onto it, and they are counter-rotating and just keeping that relatively even, not letting any one person get exposed in a massively lopsided fight. And we're definitely having to play defensive at this point, and have given up basically most of our map control. Um, so kind of getting in that siege mentality. Here comes another flank, potentially. Yep, they're going in. Okay, they have committed. Nice flash on the Draven. Uh, Swain goes golden. He is not going to survive the end of that. Um, but do we get a counter kill in the process? We do not. Okay. Uh, and I think that was a uh, support item or something used by the Yumi there. I'm not sure what exactly just shielded Zed. But it worked out pretty well. Meanwhile, Vlad is low in top. Um, and he's going to regen health there if we don't do anything about it. I don't see any opportunity to, however, though. And with the mobility on the Camille and the Zed, we got to be playing pretty far back at this point. So that's going to be tricky. Nice zoning by the Nasus. Um, Nasus is unfortunately not scaled up anywhere near where we'd like at this point in the game. It's because he had a pretty tough laning phase. Um, they were very effective in keeping him shut down, as was the goal, I think. All right. Quick, easy, free wave clear here. Um, I have a feeling the other team is going to try to take both objectives here. They've got the lane pressure to do it. They'll certainly get that Drake. Real question is, are they setting up for Baron, or are they just going to keep pushing and sieging on the base? All right, I'm hearing some Discord pings come through. I'm going to auto cam it for a sec and check what's going on here. It looks good. Yeah. Alrighty, back. Um, our Overwatch match is not happening yet. Our other team is having some internet issues. Our points, um, player shortage. We're gonna try to reschedule that for another day and see how that goes. Ooh, ooh, did they get the Zed? They did, got a shutdown on the Zed. All right, we live to fight another day. Ooh, and that is a misposition Jarvan. Can we get that? Is that bait? That's not bait. Yeah, that's not bait. There is a Vlad on the bot side, though, taking down towers, so we don't want to go after that for too long. There we go, there we go. All right, and we got, um, yeah, they're basically splitting pressure on us pretty well. We're going to have to rotate more than one player to counter each of their players, given the skill and, and disparity here. And I don't know what just happened, but that Swain sure looks cool. That must be Swain ulti. I don't know if I've ever seen that on that skin. 
Alrighty, so keeping the Camille at bay. Meanwhile, looks like TF's able to clear bot. Okay, so we're alive for a bit longer. They're definitely gonna try to push Baron at this point and try to crack um, our base that way. Because we're able to mostly match pressure, we're only kind of slowly losing towers here at this point. Alright, are they starting that up, just the two of them? Oh, we see that they're up there. Oh, this is good bait. They know that we see them. Let's see, are they gonna actually- Okay, they're actually starting it up. It's not total bait. They're actually gonna threaten Baron. Are we gonna try to counter? Or are we just gonna mess with the Zed and push out waves? They're burning it down decently fast. Um, for a bunch of level 12s and 13 players, that's a good amount of damage output right there. Not bad. Alright, looks like the Zed's just keeping us at bay. Pretty good mobility for that. Um, able to clear a little bit of vision. Got one more to the right. Okay, okay. And, uh... Yeah, we're playing pretty defensive. At this point, if the other team throws their lead, that's awesome. But I don't see this... I don't see this going well otherwise. It's going to take a pretty big mistake on their part for us to get back in this game at this point. So hopefully we see some nice, clean play. Nothing too crazy. Players kind of just keeping their calm, trying to farm up, trying to get back in it, and waiting for that mistake while we keep the base defended. And we are safe on Drake's, so Camille can take this Drake. That's not a problem. We just need to keep towers and inhibitors up. Ooh, a lot of damage coming through there. The question is, nope, okay. Our ADC is not able to survive that. We've got Jarvan hopping into Swain's tanky though. He's able to take that and get back out alive. This does mean we've only got one or two people defending that. And this game could be over in just a couple minutes at the rate it's going here. Got a nice set of waves crashing on us, um, all with Baron buff. And I think enough damage that a lot of our players are not going to be able to defend very easily there. Uh, looks like Vlad's setting up to clear our wave. Nasus is trying to zone a little bit, but he's low enough on health that somebody's going to jump on him and get him. Um, there's Zed kind of in the meantime is big. Yep, there we go. That was what I was worried about with the Nasus. Not a whole lot we can do, of course. Um, Yumi's going for that stun. And Camille's taking laser shots? What was that? Oh, okay, that's inting. That's inting. I don't know about that. Those, they might still take it, but not the place you want to be. And did I just crash, or what happened here? League of Legends. Is that it? Not sure what's going on. I'll check on that in just a second.
All right, everybody, we're coming back in a minute with game two. Um, this is Oakmont Berserkers versus Husky Regional um, Fairmont Preparatory Academy. Uh, first game went the way of Fairmont. Um, they had a very dominant top laner playing Camille. Um, she was able to kind of push around and get some pressure in our top side. Uh, that let their Jarvan roam, kind of contest scuttle, set our jungler behind early. Our jungler countered uh, by keeping pressure kind of mid and bot and avoiding our losing lane, which is of course the smart thing to do. Um, our bot lane was winning, but wasn't able to convert that into a snowball just because the other bot lane played so safe. Um, and so Berserkers are definitely thinking right now about how they could change this up and play to our strong side. Definitely trying to plan around how do we get our bot lane ahead and uh, how do we keep our top side kind of contained and isolated. And uh, I think we are switching our mid and jungle back for this game. Um, so kind of back to where we had them last week. Just try that out, see how that goes. Anyway, picks and bands are coming through. So let me switch over there. So let me uh, see, we'll drop Mobilix for a sec. There we go, there's our game client. So we are trying to ban out Strong top lane picks. Uh, you can see the Aurelia and Camille both getting banned. Those are potentially like just super, super strong duelists. We kind of expected their bot lane would do the exact same thing. And sure enough, they are. It was a pretty safe pick with a lot of escape on the Vlad. Uh, Yumi certainly helps. Um, and that could be their jungler or that could be their mid. Not really sure. Kiana has been getting some jungle play at uh, top tier kind of. Yeah, we'll see. No, that looks like a mid laner pick right there. Okay, going for another assassin or skirmisher here. All right, so it's gonna be really important to keep this Yasuo, uh, you know, get that O and 10's power spike and not that 10 and O power spike. If that 10 and O happens, that is game over. I'm one of the, the hardest scaling champions out there. Seeing comfort picks all around here for a lot of others. Ooh, okay. I have not seen an Akshan game yet. That'll be interesting. Um, patched up, got some buffs, doing pretty well. And we got another set of bands coming through. Let's see, what am I expecting to see? We could ban out the Vlad. Um, they were hovering Vlad. All right, interesting, banning out Galio. That not a good mid lane opponent against the Akshan? That must be like an Akshan counter pick or something, or else I have no idea what I'm talking about. One of the two. If I were them, who would I ban? A couple thoughts. We'll see what they do. That was not my thought. Interesting. Yep, there we go. Glad ban. Good call. Might as well. Unless that was a deliberate hover to bait us into doing that. At which point we're playing mind games with the Sicilian. All right, they did ban out the Volley Bear. That is one of our comfort picks for top lane. Looks like we're gonna try the Nasus again. I don't know about that. That is such a slow champion to scale up. There's a lot of opportunities to shut him down. I know that we banned out some of his counter picks, but still, that seems risky. Ooh, unless Yasuo is the top laner. In which case, maybe Nasus's early sustain is good. I don't know. Oh, I love watching Diana. Too bad it's not on our team. I can't cheer for the Diana. Okay, I'll try not to. Diana's awesome.
Oh, is that a vein top or is that a vein ADC? Or it could be Yasuo ADC. Diana mid, Diana jungle, who knows? This is a weird team comp. And let's see, we're picking our support character here. Uh, probably conventional hook support. Let's see what happens. Morgana, that'll do it. Nice CC. Nice shield. Okay. The vein is top. Ooh, I do not like that vein into the Nasus. If she is going to be able to shut that down. That's going to be another rough lane for Andrew here. All right. And it is a Diana A... No, okay, Diana Jungle. All right. Well, good news is my team has played a lot against the Diana Jungle because that is my favorite thing to do. They all know how that kit works. All right. And yep, we're going to need to keep Yasuo um, shut down as long as we can. Kiana, you... Okay, so cool thing about the Kiana again is that along with the Yumi, there's a lot of escape potential there. But that is their, their losing lane potentially. They're just basically able to get out of any bad situation um, by going stealth or just high mobility or uh, Yumi giving zoomies. Either way, I don't think they can escape like a good hit from a Morgana CC, at which point Draven piles on the damage, but there's just a lot of ability to back up and get out of there. And we got our delay. All right, so let's see what we can do with that. Alrighty, so um, we got our Mobilix pregame here. Um, just looking at the tags on our opponents, it looks like we don't have a ton of uh, ton of control wards being placed all the way across there. Um, but their top laner is definitely pretty dominant. Uh, their jungler is all over the place and very aggressive. Rides a high threat. Um, she'll start ganking potentially anytime post three, and definitely by level six. Um, let's see. And yeah, I'm definitely seeing kind of mid champion selection out of their ADC, so that makes sense that their main role is mid lane. Their jungler is also off role. It looks like. All right, so we got a really flexible, dynamic team we're up against. Kind of cool to see. I appreciate all of those non-standard games. Oftentimes at the pro level, everything can be pretty predictable. I'm just looking at damage distribution. It's a lot more even this game. Uh, scaling is also relatively even once again. Um, so kind of the same same approach as last game, hopefully. Uh, but again, we're real clear on where our win conditions are and, and that kind of stuff. Let's jump over to gameplay here after a quick shout out to Andrew, our top laner, who is the one having to deal with their uh, top player and trying to just keep that damage to a minimum. Um, so good luck in your future plans. Maybe maybe esports in college, who knows? We're gonna start looking at how to do that. There's some cool recruiting pipelines that have opened up and a lot of scholarships available, which is awesome. All right, jumping over to gameplay. And client should go to load screen in just a sec here. Taking a second. It's loading. It's loading. Wait for it. There we go. All right. So not a Blood Moon Diana, just a regular Diana. That's good. 
And jump and right in game. All right, control E, control I, what's objective timers? No, control E. No, I forget. Somebody remind me how to hit objective timers. All right, so we have switched sides. Oakmont is red side this time, here at top right. I'm expecting to see a pretty normal clear um, from both uh, Diana and Amumu. I think it's gonna be just a standard leash. Are we worried about an invade here? Why is our Nasus bot side? That is a very defensive place to, to put our Nasus, at least for the beginning of the game here, but that's cool. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I think I know what's going on here. Bane shuts down Nasus so hard that we're gonna send our Draven top and make Draven deal with Vayne. And our Nasus is gonna play into the Diana. No, no, I'm sorry, not the Diana, the Kiana. Um, which Kiana into Draven is no fun at all. Like, that kind of a burst assassin does not have a good time into a big tanky brawler. So that could be really interesting. We've got enough range on the Morgana that we should be able to keep the Yumi off for tail. Um, yeah, so we're going for an immediate lane swap just to try to counter that bad draft topside. And that is very interesting here. Amumu is going to start leashless on our Raptors. Good to know. And Nasus is going to try start scaling up as fast and hard as he can to get that level 2 advantage. So they are playing this out like a a top lane with supports matchup or some kind of weird hodgepodge mashup in bot lane. That's pretty interesting. In the meantime, Draven is zoning the vein. That's cool. And does Draven have the level 1 damage to do this? It looks like he does. Let's go, Oakmont. All right. Dude, that makes me happy. I like it. Uh, potions being used on both sides, of course. Hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta switch my abs around here. Let's, see. Let's put Draven top. Interesting. All right. Also taking a big chunk out of Akshan. A lot of mobility there on both sides, especially in the wave if you're the Oswo. And wow. Draven just smashes it into the tower with chunks of damage flying off right and left. Draven way ahead on CS. Um, easy level 2 advantage. I like it. Let's see, mid lane's relatively even. Yasuo's a little bit ahead in terms of just being able to chunk the Ankshan out. Um, I do want to see some more poke coming out. Takes a tower shot there, maybe not worth it on the vein. I am worried about a gank topside. Uh, Diana hitting level 4 and coming topside would be my definite plan as a Diana at this point. Especially if he's able to play that far up. It may be that the Camille's... I'm sorry, not the Camille. Um, Vayne is playing super ultra meta and just planning on that wave being pushed and frozen there. At which point, Diana coming in for a gank on Draven is a big possibility. And that would even that lane right back out. Um, why is our... Nasus. Ooh, 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 oh! We're gonna go one for one on this! Let's go! That'll do it! That'll do it! I'll take that! Okay! I like it! This is a very innovative way to, to deal with that top lane matchup. And at this point, let's just see if our Organa can keep making things happen here. Our Nasus needs to go in! Alright, we need. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh! Come on, Nasus, put the damage down. Ooh. All right. Let's see. We got damage coming in. No, no, don't disengage. They got range. Just, just swing at them. Yeah. Well, maybe not. I, okay, I'm wrong. Flash comes out. Does Kiana be able to finish him? I don't think so. And they're smart enough to back off and not tower dive. All right. So, bot lane is winning a little bit. Um, we're still ahead in CS, but they've got that kill now. Top lane, Diana is going to just kind of repeat gank the Draven, try to build up some pressure. She is not tanky though. Draven could potentially start to um, do some damage on Diana. She does not stand up to an ADC for very long. And Vayne playing pretty respectfully, that's cool. Akana, putting some zoning and damage out. Seems like Draven's catching the wave okay. Um, fighting in the minion wave though, Mumo comes in, gank top, repeat kill on the vein, 
Shutting topside down. This is an interesting way to approach this. I'm liking it. I would have said, play strong side, avoid it. But Berserkers, they don't they do not do that. Um, they go in very aggressively and always fight. And this works for them. Oh, and another gank mid here. Is this enough to secure? Yep, okay, okay, okay. Let's see if any follow-up damage. No, but he'll be forced out of lane, so good enough. All right, good job on vision. I like it. Ward saved lives. Trying to keep that wave frozen there. It will eventually push back the other way. That's okay though. And this second game is going a lot better. We are ahead. Now I don't think we can step up. Oh, uh, okay. So I don't think we can step up and just kind of kite back. I think that the meta here is we either need to all in commit or play really safe, one of the two. Because they just have a lot more range and mobility than we do. So hopefully our top laner can adjust to this kind of style down on bot side here. Um, and Morgana's zone. Oh, nice TP coming in. I like it. No, 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 just go in and fight. Go in and fight. Go in and fight. Nasus can't back off. They just need to go in. Yeah, take the tower shot. That's cool. Not a problem. That's what a tank is for. I like it. Ooh, and another gank potentially coming through. This is such an aggressive game. Now, Diana is clearing our jungle a little bit, but that's okay. It's going. All right, and we're going to secure early Drake off the back of that kill there. And Diana's coming back to lane, but it will not be before our Moomoo is cleared. Oh, come on. Put out a little more damage and then recall. You can do it. Oh, no, I guess he's got to get topside. It looks like they've rotated lanes around two. Where did their vein go? Okay, their vein's going mid. We got to get this done. Lane's going to show up there if we're not careful or else push out lane a bunch. All right. Yeah, yeah, we're missing CS. I get why they're running. Um, I am worried about... Um, a lot of damage coming in on the Drake and top side. I don't think he's realized that they're rotated yet. Or he must realize it. He can see it. I just don't know quite... Yeah. Quite how bad they think it is. That Draven is... You know, if he catches Diana in a bad spot, the damage will melt her. But at the same time, she can start to one-shot people at some point. Alright, Draven's gonna come in. And stem the bleeding on the Yasuo here. A lot of tower plates missing. Um, I'm not sure that dragon was worth it early, but of course we can't say that till the game's over, so we'll find out. Shield coming through from Morgana. And I think we let this push to us. Um, their jungler, we know their jungler's topside. There's no real threat of a dive here. Just, you know, slow harass into tower. Ooh! Yeah, definitely let it push to us, right? A um, lot of heal coming through from the Yumi, but we're able to get one! And let's see what's happening, but a uh, big old skirmish right here. Both the people going up, uh, one for one so far. Akshan's gonna have to run though. Um, Diana should be able to stick to him like glue. Okay, yep, and that is a one for two top side and a one for one bot side there. Timers are short, people are back on the map already. And kills are even, gold is relatively even too. Thick plates are running a little towards our opponents. Um, we got the Drake instead. And map is being somewhat split. Uh, Amumu is definitely losing topside jungle and is going to need to kind of play bot side to pick that back up. Lots of missing pings. Um, I think they're just seeing the Briar Cone blast through there. And I kind of want to see the Morgana just land hard CC on the Kiana here. Okay, hard CC, hard CC. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, duel it out, duel it out. Okay, and time to back up. All right, that's a bummer. Vision score is a little more even this time. Diana's kind of leading with seven. I think our other team is place, placing a lot more words this time than they had in the past. It's awesome, good for them. And uh, their own vision getting shut down by a control ward up there. That's okay. Uh, Nasus will be CSing under tower here. And it looks like Draven and Yasuo are battling topside. Let's see if there's anything going on there. Nope. Creating the respectful, keeping distance there, just pushing the wave and walking back. And is this uh, vision placement? Good, 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 good. Watching those potential ganks by Diana. Um, awesome. Controlling reward getting cleared. So 
Very, very good play by Draven. Does not want that thing to jump right on. Um, oops, and their jungler is having a little bit of an internet connection issue again. Alright. Draven is... Sorry, uh... Akshan's roaming down, kind of stealth at the moment. And it looks like we're going to try to get a power play bot side here. Um, our opponents are definitely respecting that. And we pick off the Yumi. I don't think we can. I think we can crash a wave though. Ooh, is that... That's bad, that's bad. Uh, we didn't quite make it happen, that was close. Okay, so nice CC from Yumi. Um, currently, Dan is moving into counter gank. With our Asus being low, I kind of think we're in trouble again. We'll see. She could definitely go in and stick right to him. And that ulti, does that do enough to get her? Nope. Okay, wow. Okay, so cool. Survived the ulti, survived that potential gank there. Are going to lose a bunch of CS on tower here if we're not careful. We're going to try to dive. Um, Morgana goes golden. And that'll be enough to finish it. Why didn't the tower keep aggroing Diana? Not sure. But that's a lot of loss CS, that's kind of a bummer. Um, at this point, they back off knowing that we're missing from lane. They've got a really good sense of what's going on there. And meanwhile, with all that pressure bot side, we do lose the first tower on top side. Um, I think that's okay. Alrighty, everybody, I'm going to have to sign out here in a couple minutes, give my kids to soccer and all that good stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed tuning in to another match in Oakmont Esports, this time versus Husky Regional from Fairmont Preparatory Academy. This is week two of play versus California League of Legends Varsity. And another gank coming in mid, well done by the jungle, counter gank from Diana coming in. I think she's overextended, we should be able to take the Diana unless she's able to back off, good, it does. And then, alright, cool. So, definitely good pressure from both junglers. Their uh, current top laner, Yasuo, is roaming down. He might try to steal some camps. Um, Smite comes through. And the question is, what do we do about this? Can we take the Yasuo? He's kind of overextended, right? Get in there, Akshan! Up your teammate! Ooh, 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 was waiting for the ulti. I see what that was. Okay, okay, I take it back. Oh, and this is a, a rough team fight there. Um, so I, I take it back then. My bad. You guys, you guys know what's best. Alrighty, so I gotta go. Sorry about that. Hopefully the rest of this game goes well, and I'll get you guys a score report by email tomorrow, or let me know in class. See everybody later.